We are about to put the standing seam metal roof on this house, and this is our last chance to do some really interesting testing that you have probably never seen before. I've never seen it before, I've never done it before. So uh, what we are dealing with here is the Mento, which is the black roof underlayment that is on top of the roof. We got force field on the walls, we got Solatex Mento on the roof. I had great success with this material on the tiny lab when we built that, and you can see that playlist separately. That was a whole different build because obviously it's a tiny house on wheels. This is a real house, and so it's on a real construction schedule, it's real square footages and all that stuff, and it's a little bit weird because of a couple factors that I want to just explain. I think the first thing that is going wrong with the Mento in this case is that First of all, it, the house is a system, right? We all know that. If you watch this channel, that's what it's all about. Things interact with other things. So, Mento is fine, it's great material. We put it on top of OSB, not plywood. Plywood is what we used on the tiny lab. The OSB in this case is rough side up because we've got the radiant barrier sheathing on the other side. So, it's really splintery and nasty. If you've not worked with OSB on the rough side up before, then you might not know what I'm talking about. There's potentially lots and lots of little splinters of wood sticking up through my Solatex. In fact, the Solatex is possible to penetrate with a pine needle. I have seen a pine needle segment about that long uh, come up through the stuff. If you get it right at the right angle as some kind of a quantum mechanics thing, I don't understand it, but anyway, it works. Second thing is that this lot we have is so beautiful. It's got 100 foot tall pine trees around, and these very tall pine trees are dropping these bad boys right onto my roof. I'm standing there while I'm watching them drop from 50 feet up, and of course, these are like little bombs for my nice airtight, watertight roof underlayment. Third thing is, we hung the eaves separately, as you saw in another video. That process put a lot more abuse than probably would have happened if we had built this like a regular roof. So, for those three reasons, I think that we've abused this Mento in some very unique ways, and these are things that, even if you were to try and predict all this stuff, you just can't predict everything, and that is why testing is your friend. So, what we're about to do is pressurize the house which is the opposite of how most people do blower door tests. We're going to blow air in, and then we're going to use soap water on the roof to try and find where all the bubbles are forming, and then we're going to uh, mark them, come back later, and fix them. So let's go ahead and kick this blower door on and find out what happens. For this test, we're going to need two things. Number one, you need to know how to run a blower door test. If you've not seen the blower door test on this house, you can see that in a separate video. We also ran a hurricane-proof test, which is a, that's a dramatic way of saying that we ran a wind-driven rain test on this. That was all cool in depressurization mode. This book was written for you to know how to do this test. It's all the prep and the analysis of the data and stuff like that. We're not going to need anything except getting 250 pascals today. So when you have the uh, know-how of the test, the way that most people do it, then you can start thinking creatively and come up with weird test ideas like this. By the way, this is my dad's idea, and in the same day that he suggested this test, somebody on our YouTube channel commented uh, suggesting a similar test, so I thought that was pretty cool. Second thing you're going to need is dish soap. We have a sprayer uh, that's a backpack sprayer right there because this is going to take a long time to be able to cover everything. There's no scientific method on how we mixed the soap in, we just made it soapy enough so that it'll show up. Because we're running this uh, RetroTech blower door from outside, we're using the app. And I'm going to set the pressure to 50 pascals. When we ran this test at the get-go, under depressurization mode only, uh, we had around 300 CFM. Right now, the fan overdrove to 60 pascals. It's dialing back, and we're actually even tighter than we were before which I'm so happy about. Now, a word of warning, you need the roof rain screen to be on the house in order to do this test. If you do it without the rain screen lattice holding everything down, then what you've got up there is a 36 foot wide, 24 foot long sail that you're gonna blow wide open with this thing. Uh, and, and it looks like this. That was what happened the first day that we tried it, and I didn't think about that. So. Now, we know we've had uh, 50 pascals, which is about a 20 mile an hour wind on every surface of the house from the inside. That's enough for us to get the uh, pinprick high velocity uh, blowing through the Mento. So let's go on upstairs and see what's happening. See anything yet? This is my dad. He's in charge of the, this is his test. So he's running the uh, sprayer. And um, we're not sure if we've got this mixture thick enough yet. So we're gonna run an experiment. 
we're going to make a pinprick and see what happens when we know for a fact there's a hole. Go ahead and spray it. Yeah, it's not thick enough. While Dad's dancing, I'm going to explain that you want to be very careful about using this technique on a material that's not Solatex Mento. I happen to know because we talked with 475 High Performance Building Supply that they've done this test and it, they made sure that dish soap is not going to break the surface tension of this stuff and hurt the butyl tape, which is stuck down to it, or the vanna tape. This is the best thing ever. I love this. Okay. So now we made it significantly more soapy. We still have it under pressure. And you can see the pressure is making the Mento balloon out. So we're sure that air is wanting to come through here. In case you're new to diagnostics in general, this test is most like a gas leak detection test, which you run in the case of gas fueled appliances. You use a soap solution that's like very, very concentrated soap to paint the outside of a gas line, natural gas, propane, something like that. And if you have a leak, then it will form bubbles. What we're trying to do here is simulate that without having a really thick, goopy, viscous soap all over my house, because then it will be sudsy in my yard forever and ever. When we do find a leak, uh, the idea is because it's going to be wet and because it's going to be soapy, we won't be able to use spray paint, anything like that. What we're going to do is, since there's already a hole there, we're going to mark it with a push pen that we'll be able to see from above because it's got a nice bright colored head on it. Right now, it looks like we still are not thick enough on our mix to be able to find the leaks. I know for a fact if there are leaks, they're going to be here. This is where we've been entering and leaving the roof for most of the uh, couple months that we've been trumping up here and doing all this work. The, the phenomenon that we're trying to cure right now is when it rains really heavily and really steadily for a long period of time and this Mento gets completely saturated, meaning that there's now capillary action that's able to move water side to side and, and you know around basically opposing gravity, then we see leaks in certain lines down uh, below. And I don't know where they're coming from. I've tried finding things, I've tried looking visually, and I'm pretty sure that that's why we're suspicious of these little tiny splinters and the little tiny pine needles and the pine cone pinpricks, um, is because it only happens when the roof is completely saturated for a period of a few hours, which is never gonna happen in real life. So if we don't find these issues right now, and this test is actually not successful, it still was worth a shot because I've never seen this done before. So I think that this, if we can have one of the uh, national laboratories like develop an actual protocol for this, that would be great. I'm not a researcher. So if we don't have this work, because this Mento is never gonna be completely saturated because there will be a mechanically locked one and a half inch tall standing seam roof all over this thing that's put on by a very reputable company. Um, and I've got a 10 year workmanship warranty and a 30 year uh, material warranty on it. I'm not very worried about the fact that this is gonna be wet at any point. If it gets a little bit wet, the 1% of the rain and precipitation that gets behind it, it's not gonna make the entire thing wet and result in that total saturation in the capillary flow. Okay, so we're still continuing to try and find something, but this right here is telling me that we're not gonna find anything. The fact that we've got bubbles here is uh, good, but the fact that they're not growing, even though I know air is trying to get out from behind this means that these are not actually air leaks. This is just where the suds from our solution happens to be forming bubbles. If there were actual leaks here, these bubbles will all be growing and popping and then forming new bubbles and growing and popping. And it would be very obvious. None of these is what we're looking for. Maybe let's try to isolate a panel. I mean, I mean if you notice like uh, here, see all these patches? Yeah. This was me fixing the leaks. So if you can see these patches, if you follow our Instagram account, you might have seen me put these on, but the Vanna patches here are all in this line. And you'll, I, I, it's because I noticed that there was a leak down below in this rafter cavity. And so I tried to fix them by visual. So, I mean, this is where I think it was. So if we're not seeing it in this area, then I don't think that we're gonna see it. So since the soapy water doesn't seem to be working very well, we just made a pinprick 
right in here, and we poured soap, dish soap, straight onto it. Okay, so we're at 50 pascals. It's a 20 mile an hour wind. It looks like that probably is the case. We can't even see the pin prick that we just made for sure with this pin. And so uh, I agree with my dad. The pressure behind it, in the case of a gas line, you got a pressure that's in multiple inches of water column. That's a lot. Here, we're dealing with a fifth of an inch of water column. I could up the pressure, and we did that in depressurization mode on the uh, hurricane test video. But in this case, I do not want to up the pressure because in this mode, we could potentially untape a lot of the seals that we've done up here, which all would blow open if you push hard enough on the backside of them. So we're not gonna do that because that would defeat the purpose of my entire experiment here, which is to find leaks and fix them. So this has been um, a failed attempt. I hope that you will take this and fix some things that maybe you think we've done wrong and um, make it into an actual fixed protocol. And I will include it in the book if you can make sure that I know when you shoot a video of that, that'd be great. So I hope that you have found this test interesting. If you want to run this test, you know that it takes almost no ingredients to run it. Please do make sure that you comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time.